what's up guys welcome back to the channel my name is Giselle and I'm here to talk to you about ultrasound and the reason why I'm going to do this video today is because there are some things that you guys need to know before you spend your time your money and all the effort it takes just to get into a program this is me telling you guys straight up what it is that you guys have to absolutely know before jumping headfirst into trying to get that ultrasound career I love my job don't get me wrong a lot of my fellow co-workers love their job a lot of people that I see on Facebook Instagram anyone that you talk to that does ultrasound for the most part loves their job but I bet you if they knew these things that I'm going to tell you about maybe it would have given them a second thought or pushed them a little bit harder to not burn themselves out because these are things that can take a toll on your body your mind even your life go ahead and sit back relax grab a drink my favorite thing is watching YouTube videos and eating snacks grab that snack and let's get started so I kind of jumbled up everything into five different categories because honestly there's so much I could talk about these are gonna be five categories that you're going to be able to figure out the downside of ultrasound is it too good to be true do these people really love their job is there like nothing else going on with ultrasound is it this just golden job that everyone loves and never retires from some people actually never retire from it these are some things that you need to know if you want to do ultrasound for the long run put these things in your mind first and realize this is very important to get through some of the toughest years of your life especially when you're just first starting out and have no idea what you're actually getting yourself into number one know you're more than just a button pusher yes we push buttons but we don't just push buttons and take pictures. We're actually taking diagnostic images that's going to help these patients and help the doctors in the long run to figure out what's going on, what's causing their pain, or what is the underlying condition that these people are having. When people say, oh, I love babies, I can do this job. Or, oh, I love taking pictures, I can do this job. Well, okay, maybe that'll help you a little bit getting that motivation mindset to doing this job, but it's more than just that. You're going to be doing a lot of critical thinking. There's so many different indications for you to figure out what's going on. You're going to have to use your brain and take the acquired diagnostic images to go with your report that you're going to send to the doctor. We have to talk to these patients. Sometimes you're gonna have to deal with patients who are super angry or who are in a lot of pain, who don't want you to touch them, who are going to ask you a million things before you can even get a word out of your mouth. Now, I'm just talking about hospital ultrasound probably for the most part, but even in outpatients, you're gonna have patients who come in and are grumpy or who were late and now you have to deal with that. It's just a lot of different things than just pushing buttons, taking diagnostic images. You're probably going to have to do a lot more critical thinking than you originally thought we're the ones that are helping the doctors diagnose these patients it's a great job but it's a lot you shouldn't go into it for just the money but you should go into it because you truly want to help other people and you feel like you are able to be the one that's confident and that can say hey this is this this is what I saw and just explain to the doctor that you did your best to do this ultrasound you're going to be frustrated at times you also have to just always do your best for yourself and for the patient number two work-related injuries there is an extremely high injury rate on on this job which is about 90% most of the websites that I looked at it's pretty much from 80 to 95% I mean 90% already is a high number and I won't lie I've had many and plenty of days where my wrist was in a lot of pain it's no joke you're going to be standing or sitting for long periods of time and you're going to be pushing a machine around if you're working in a hospital you're going to have to be adjusting your patient's bed you're going to be scanning patients who have large body habitus patients who are debilitated disabled patients there's a lot of different things that could cause work-related injuries if you just go right now and google work-related injuries and ultrasound that'll pretty much explain everything to you the most common things that 
that I know hurt are obviously your back, your feet, your shoulder, and your hips. I had to go to some chiropractors to help me with my back pain, and I also started getting massages to help me with my lower back pain. You can only imagine the wear and tear that ultrasound can do on your body. To prevent that general physical exhaustion, stretch every morning and night, stay active, go to the gym or work out, ergonomics. They stress ergonomics a lot because you need to make sure that you're keeping your body safe, not stressing it out. Make sure you get enough sleep because ultrasound will take a toll on your body. It's honestly long periods of time, maybe like eight to 10 hours, even 12 hours, sometimes more than 12 hours. Just make sure that you guys are taking care of yourself if you do go into this field. One thing I just wanted to mention was that I recently started using compression socks. Those really made a huge, huge difference on my feet. I do stand a lot from 10 to 12 hours a day. So I just wanted to shout out Baze because he literally just bought me a ton of compression socks from Amazon. And if there's anything that I think you guys should get, it is compression socks. I'm just surprised at how many compression socks he got. Like, look at these, so many. And they all have patterns on them. My favorite's this one with the panda. So cute, right? Do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself. Get those compression socks, get that massage, go work out at that gym. Do anything in your power to keep yourself healthy and from straining yourself because you're gonna need it. Number three, handling the pressure and on-call shifts. No one's going to hold your hand while you're trying to scan this patient. No one's going to force you to figure out what's wrong with this patient. It's all on you. You have to understand your anatomy to tell the doctor just little details and know the diagnostic images that you are taking are the correct ones. Most places in the United States is gonna have an on-call shift for you to take. What is an on-call shift? Sometimes you're going to be on a shift that's on call and they're gonna be able to call you from whatever time it starts to ends to come do an exam. Maybe they'll call you in the middle of the night like 2 a.m. Hey, we have an ultrasound, an abdomen ultrasound, we need you to come in 2 a.m. You go in there, you scan the abdomen, great, you can leave and then 4 a.m. they call you, we have a pelvic ultrasound. And then you go in there, you scan that pelvic ultrasound, you have no idea what you're looking at, but you have to be able to describe what you see. It's a lot of pressure because you have to know what you're looking at, you can't feel confused. I understand that in the beginning, it's gonna be your first time seeing these types of things, but that just comes with a job and that comes with experience. Handling all different types of pressure is really important and especially on these on-call shifts because you're gonna be the only one there and you can't really ask anyone for help in the middle of the night. Just know it's a lot of pressure. You're gonna be really nervous your first couple of months, even years. You're going to feel a lot of different emotions. But like I said, if you really, really wanna do it, if it's something you wanna do and you feel like you can handle the pressure, why not? Number four, workload inconsistency. I say inconsistency because some days you may have 15 patients that you're gonna be able to do. Some days you'll have eight patients that you'll be able to do. For example, in a hospital setting, you can probably do 12 to 16 patients in a 10 hour day. Sometimes you have hard patients, so maybe you'll do seven patients in a day. In an outpatient setting, you're gonna have certain slots where people are going to come in, maybe like every 30 minutes or every hour. Sometimes someone's gonna come in late, sometimes there's gonna be a no-show, and you're gonna have to figure out what to do at that point. And there will be times where the doctor just adds somebody. Even though you're like 12, deep in on your schedule and then they're like oh let's just put them in and it's maybe bilateral low extremity venous ultrasound which could take 15 minutes but you're on a set schedule so you're gonna have to be able to do those exams and get the job done. In one of my other videos, I talked about adaptability. This is where you're gonna have to adapt the most, trying to get your patients done as efficient as you can with the best care that you can because I spend a lot of my time trying to comfort these patients. If you're not able to do that, then maybe this field is not for you. A lot of times these patients are going through things and you have to be able to talk them through it because they're scared or they don't want this test done. And most of our exams 
exams are 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Be able to adapt and to figure out how to get your job done in the best way possible. Number five, this is very important because if you already have a place in mind where you want to work, okay, you know, you've maybe done your research, but this job is in most places an oversaturated market. People ask why we're so competitive. Well, where I live, there's only so many clinicals that you can go to and so many students that these clinicals can take. Most of the time in other cities that I know that take 40 students, it's kind of oversaturated. So if you are in one of those cities, please do your research, figure out where you want to work. Some places you may have to move, even travel and commute to for more than an hour just to have a job in ultrasound. Before you go into it, just research. Know the job market that you're going into and know that it is a competitive field. There are lots of opportunities with this job. There's outpatient facilities, long-term care facilities, doctor's offices that you can even go to, travel contracts and companies, hospitals, even the small community hospitals. Figure out, do I want to do OBGYN specialty? Do I want to work in a vascular lab. I want to work with a specializing doctor and just do cardiac. Even in the long run, if you don't like that place, you can always go to another place. But with that being said, you also have to be registered in RDMS, which is what makes us able to practice and do ultrasound. Most people don't know this, but after you graduate, it's not just, oh, I'm an ultrasound tech. Yay. No, you actually have to take an SPI board exam, which is sonography principles and instrumentation. Once you are ready to go into the ultrasound world, you need to make sure that you pass that SPI exam. And even after you pass that SPI exam and become registered, you still need to take a specialty boards exam. And what people don't know is, is that there are different board exams. So there's the abdomen, OBGYN, musculoskeletal, breast, PD pediatrics, vascular. So these exams are tests that you're going to have to spend your money on after you graduated from your program or college. The education actually continues on for more years to come. I'll talk about those exams in future videos. There you have it guys. Ultrasound is an amazing career field. Many of us love our job. I mean that's a good thing. People like their job. People are gonna work and they're gonna do their job well. If you have the mindset, don't give up. Get in there know these things are going to happen and know that as much as it's a great job there are going to also be downsides but if you guys have any other questions please don't hesitate to comment down below and i just wanted to say thank you guys so much for making this channel grow it just gives me the motivation to make more videos for you to answer your questions and push myself more to do this kind of stuff because y'all this stuff is hard to do you're putting yourself out there for the whole entire world to see you may get judged it is what it is but i love doing what i do and i want everyone to know out there that it's a great job with that being said thank you guys so much i hope you guys enjoyed this video enjoyed your snack please don't forget to like that button and also subscribe so you can be a part of our family thank you so much and i hope you guys have a fabulous day bye